Hello, everybody. Um, good morning. Good morning. It's the 11th day in the month of February 2022. My name is Heritage Adesa, the market analyst at Hot Forex Nigeria. Quickly, as usual, we'll check through the markets, find out what's going on, um, what the big stories are, if the opportunities, and then if there are, how we can take advantage of it. But please always remember that this is a communication material. I should not be considered as investment advice or investment recommendation. You should acknowledge that investments in FX and CFD products is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which users are solely responsible and liable. Now, what we have this morning is an overall risk off market environment. Um, starting the day, we have risk of across board. Risk of means negative market environment, right, where you have risk assets being pressured, you have safe asset appreciating. And the reason for this was um, coming from yesterday, we had that you know, US inflation data, where the inflation data came out really hot, unexpected business expectation, and even the year over year print came out at 7.5% previously printed at 7%, now 7.5%, where markets were expecting 7.3%. Now, this is way higher than the Federal Reserve's, you know, um, inflation cap, which is around 2% thereabout. Now, why is that negative for the market? That means that the Federal Reserve have to even hike rates even faster. We make markets expect them to hike rates to now get inflation back under control. Remember that Biden had already called, you know, Fed members and Fed leadership, right, into his office to really, you know, show concern about inflation. So obviously they have to get inflation back under the radar, back on track, right? Now that is that high, if the Federal Reserve starts to tighten policies by hiking rates at a very fast pace, it is not good for equities. And when equities down that much, obviously high beta currencies follow suit as well, right? And then you have the whole thing spinning across board, right? The CPI data came out very hot. If you just look at the calendar that we have, uh, so, okay, how the calendar, it came out hot. We had, you know, um, even the year over year print came out 7.5% and even the 6.0% on the year over year monthly, you know, um, print as well as even January print as well, 0.6%. Now, all of this has pushed the dollar strong around, you know, today's session. And if you look, when we get to the chat, we'll talk about how the dollar first went up, came down before eventually moved in that direction. But let's move on. Um, apart from the um, hot CPI, we also had Fed members, right? Um, one of them, Bullard, also come out yesterday talking about wanting or expecting, ready to tighten, expecting about 1% hike in the month of July, by right? July this year. Now, this is so much of a hawkish tilt because... First of all, the Fed have not even started to hike yet. Markets were already pricing about 25 basis points, that's 0.25%, you know, hike in the month of March. All right before the data point, we had some market participants calling for 50 basis points, that's 0.550, you know, percent hike by the month of March. Now he is saying that should happen, and then in the next meeting again, they should have another 0.5% hike, which is a lot of hawkish reaction. I mean, yes, inflation is really high, but that's really a lot for markets to hold on to. But for now, we have to go with what the market is saying. And that's exactly what we are looking at right now. For now, across the currency space, we have the silver currencies strong across board, JPY strong across board. We have USD well, well supported. We have even CTF supported. While on the other hand, we have currencies like the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, all pressured across board. Equities are down, right? Generally, most especially tech, US, the NASDAQ, as well as the US 500, down about 0.4% so far towards 44.50. It wasn't long we we're trading at 45.50. Now we're down almost 100 points here already. Oil prices are also down, down from $90 per barrel. We also have VIX spiking back towards 25. We are this close to, to 20 level, which I was looking for almost three weeks from last week. And now we're back at high levels as well. And that means that equity, that doesn't bother for equities. It means we might see for the downside in equities even going forward if this continues to increase. Bond yields jump above 2%. That's a lot. Right? With bond yields above 2%, obviously that is not good for equities. And obviously that shows how much markets are expecting federal hikes even going forward. The dollar is also very strong. We mentioned the support trend line. If you will look at that now when we get to the chart, very strong jumping up as well from that support trend line going back to May 2021. On the cumulative strength side, we have JPY USD leading the FX majors, including the CHF. And then we have AUD NZD lagging. The euro is also pressured, obviously, from cross flows from the dollar as well. AUD JPY, you know, um, is down about 0.5%. And in their head, it's going to be a light economic calendar. Now, looking at the charts, 
Right, first of all, from the dollar index that we talked about, uh, let's see if we have the dollar index here. We might mention a support trend line coming from the month of May 2021. I think this is it. Uh, we said it was a key one to pay attention to, even going into this. Even we were talking about this level from way back as, let's clean this up, as last week, this week, throughout this week as well, as a key barometer that I wanted to watch out for. Now, when we had the CPI print, initially we had our first jump to the upside and it seemed markets just paired back that in the media to the downside and even paired away all those gains and even moved low as well. Now, first of all, you know, um, you look at this as, one of the reasons why it, it might not always be best to jump in on data sometimes. In as much as, yes, you can, you have a game plan, you have what you want to do. The immediate moment data points are released, it always usually sends, there's a lot of things moving on at that particular point in time. Market participants had to figure it out, try, because I also had this in the back of my mind. When I saw the data release, CPI, definitely a, a strong one for the dollar. Remember that we had, you know, Euro USD downside expected. We had USD card from our month, from our morning video yesterday, right? You can go back and check that. I remember saying this to one of my colleagues that in as much as, you know, that dollar strength is evident. I mean, are we not going to expect two business points hike before the year end? Right, because markets are already pricing already 50 basis points hike already. So hotter inflation, would it mean that they're pricing 1% or even 2% for the year, right? And now it's really seeming like that now because that's why I felt like that's why the dollar came down some more. Markets are already saying, yes, it's strong, it's good. The Fed will also hike, but we've been pricing this in for a while now, right? How about some, you know, you know that indecision in the middle of that and then we saw the dollar come back down, but clearly, clearly, clearly not long. We had the dollar push back higher in line with that. Now, this also goes to tell you that the market is not moving in a straight line, right? A little bit of patience sometimes can help. Yesterday, so this will have been a very good example. And now you look at what Bullard has said. He says he expects 1% rate hike by, by July. That means that if they go at that pace, by the end of the year, we could be looking at two, right? Now, in as much as um, I think that's a major worry for markets, inflation that we're trying to curb right now, I don't think it's going to go down as fast. The pace at which it has gone up, you look at how much, you know, um, the Federal Reserve pumped into the U.S. economy, that's a lot of money across, even across all the major central banks. Now inflation has come up. A couple of rate hikes might not push it down as fast. That's what I just really think. So I feel like the faster they even hike, right, the inflation might not come down as fast and they might have to even hike even more. And it, we might really be in for a lot of rate hikes even going into the year, even from even the RBA we had you know, coming from, you know, the central bank in the RBA as well, saying that they might, if economic indicators continue to show, you know, positive, you know, um, prints as well, they might see some high even in the year 2022. That is the RBA also turning more hawkish there, right? We have the ECB also talking about turning hawkish from the last meeting, even though this week, you know, they've paid back some of those moves, but is that we have even the BOG, not recently, but a couple of weeks back, where there was talk about inflation on, under the radar there, but it was there. I mean, almost everybody is talking about, you know, this inflation. And it wouldn't be a surprise because there's a lot of money that's gone into the economies over the last one year, two years because of the COVID-19 variant. So virus generally. So there's that to pay attention to. But for now, generally, you know, dollar is strong. Risk assets are down, right? You look at the likes of... US 100, for example, down across board, right? You like so US 30 as well, down across board, all of them down pressured in today's session. But in terms of looking at the strength of the dollar, right? Because we have equities also down. Yes, we've seen some pullback in today's session, but clearly, obviously, just pullback. We could see continuation of downside in today's session. You look at currency pairs like USD JPY. Let's see how we can clean this up first. Uh, all right. Now, first of all, we've had that. All right. We've had a continuous the upside for the entire week. We've pulled back to the 50-day moving average as well, looking to close back above. For those of us that you know are very familiar with the um, double simple moving average strategy that we'll talk about as well, this is also a good one to look out for. We could look for further upside on this, but in terms of a cap, obviously, this would be the next point of call, right? In terms of a pullback to the upside into, um, entry and then push to the high. Upside, this will be the next point of course, next point of resistance to so pay attention to barring today's highs already. And then there's also key interesting levels to have core risk just below here or around this level, just below this, just above this previous resistance area. Now, there's that to watch out for. If you look at currency pairs like Euro USD as well, interesting one here. We've broken below um 1.14 was the previous slow that we had for the range almost all through the week. Now, any retest back to this level. You know, could be interesting in terms of looking for further strength for the dollar and weakness for the likes of euro versus the dollar. If you look at this as well, 
in rotation back to this level could be interesting in terms of further downside. And then obviously we still have a lot of room to the downside, right? Although we had we, today is Friday as well, and that means that you could see you know, profit taking from the down strong move that we had in the dollar yesterday, um, down strong move that we had in Euro USD, strength in the dollar rather, you know, that we had from yesterday. So there's that to have at the back of your mind. But with sentiment being pressured, obviously this could still continue lower even into the weekend, right? There's that to pay attention to. The likes of NZD USD also an interesting one as well. I have this one on my reader clearly, right? Right, key 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 area around here around 0 0.665 you know um previous resistance support resistance supports around here and now now we're back testing the you know this time around is even the 100 moving average that we're looking at around here Let's see i think this is all right around here that could be interesting as well in terms of looking for the downside on this right but like i said i need to see equities continue to be you know pressured for me to have more confidence in this i'm more concerned about being friday i'm concerned about profit taking so obviously entering any one of these things i have to have my risk very much tight it could continue to next week next week this has laid the groundwork right next week we have to hear what more federal members say if they keep turning more hawkish obviously strength in dollar is here to stay right but even with all of that i'm still very careful in terms of today's session but what we have risk of obviously you expect anything to be pressured against the likes of usd also um, AUD USD is also an interesting one to look out for if you want to look out for as well. Similar pattern there, 0 0.715, an interesting one to look out for. If you look at the previous highs, right, the previous highs going back to early February, tested, tested, support around here, support around here. If we could get any rotation back here, could be interesting, looking for the downside. And then we have key areas that we can anchor our risk just above you know, today's highs here as well. Right now, we could look at dollar strength. We could look at... um weakness for the likes of the euro we could look at weakness for the likes of aud for the likes of nzd but like i've always say markets are still so excuse me in the middle of trying to figure this out yes we can talk about strength for jpy chf strength for you know usd weakness for aud nzd even the euro but in looking at all of this we still need to be very 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 watchful remember it's friday profit taking is a risk and i think that after the kind of move that we had today we could see condition yes but if you're going to sell, you don't want to be selling at the lows. You want to see better pullbacks, more retracement before looking to jump back into, you know, the market. On the calendar, it's going to be a light one. For today's session, we really, you know, we don't have so much going on. Let's quickly see yesterday. Today, Friday, yes, we had a couple of data released already for the day, but nothing of much import. Fact, I think markets are more focused about Federal Reserve, the dollar, CPI numbers, what comments say, what comments, you know, we hear from Federal Reserve members, bond yield, I mean, bond yields are above 2% currently, that's really, really a lot, so all that are still on the mind of markets for now, so I don't think we have any data point that could, could, you know, push anything more, although consumer sentiment it could be an interesting one for the US, that's the Michigan, you know, consumer sentiment, that could be interesting as well, even though not much change is expected, like to see how much consumers are confident about the economy as well so we'll look at that as well but apart from that nothing really really much it's friday so um most of people have most of market participants may you know not want to take any major position going into the weekend remember we could always see profit taking we could see you know um the risking as well going into the weekend ahead of the weekend but obviously right now risk off equity is down oil price is down and then we have the likes of you know, dollar strength, JPY strength, CHF strength, and weakness for the likes of AUD and the NCD. So that's it for now. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I would always, always do our best to assist. All right. Um, thank you very much. Do enjoy the rest of your trading session. Goodbye for now.